We are on the hunt for primordial black holes. These are black holes formed in the first second of the history of the universe. This is a theoretical idea. It's a hypothetical concept. We don't know if these primordial black holes exist. Different theories of how they could form give different populations of black holes. Some In some models, the universe is flooded with very, very tiny black holes, like no bigger than your thumb. In some cases, they are, in some models, they're massive. They're thousands of times more massive than the sun. They're all in, in mixture. Sometimes it's column A and sometimes in, uh, column A and column B. It's, it's a crazy theoretical mess. But that's okay because each one of these theories leads to a certain population of black holes hanging out in the universe, extra black holes that have been here since basically the beginning. And we want to know what would be the effects of what, could we see these? What, are they hanging around today? One way to look for them is through their Hawking radiation, which is why I talked about last week. We see no evidence of any black holes evaporating, which can mean one of two things. Either Hawking radiation is wrong Maybe black holes don't evaporate after all. I mean, I don't know. It's it's a theoretical idea of its own. It's not guaranteed. It's not a promise. So maybe black holes don't evaporate. Or maybe only black holes are big enough or primordial black holes are big enough that they haven't had time to evaporate yet in our present day age of the universe. So we got to think of some other ways to look for them. And if And this is hard because black holes are small. Black holes do not give off radiation, except maybe Hawking radiation, but that's very slight. And, you know, space is dark and not really giving off a lot of radiation. It's, it's hard to spot them. So we have to look for these primordial black holes through their gravity, through how they can mess things up. Uh, one example, one example is uh, microlensing of stars. Like if you're looking at a star, say you're looking at me and I'm a star and I'm all glowing, being a star, la di da di da And then a black hole, a tiny black hole crosses our those, this line of sight. There's going to be some gravitational lensing of the light coming from that star. So you'll see a brief flash of brightness because you'll get some extra rays of light and then it'll go away as the black hole passes. Pretty legit, right? So we can just stare at a whole bunch of stars and wait for them to like flash or blink or something. We might be able to catch a tiny black hole. Another way is if, uh, say you're a white dwarf or a neutron star and you're just hanging out, minding your own business, and then a random black hole just smashes into you, that's going to be a bad day, right? This is going to give you an extra source of gravity. It might trigger a runaway nuclear event. It might lead to a detonation of a white dwarf or a neutron star. Some of the most, most powerful explosions we see in the universe might be triggered by a black hole colliding with the star. Another example might be... Uh, binary stars. Like if you've got two stars in a nice wide binary like this, and they're just hanging out doing this for a few billion years, and then over wanders a little tiny black hole, and that gravitational pull is going to rip apart this binary. It might happen. It might happen. Uh, dwarf galaxies, small, loosely bound collections of stars. If if they get a bunch of black holes, they might get disrupted. We might see dwarf galaxies evaporating. Um, it's even been hypothesized that Planet Nine, you know, that whole hypothetical planet in the distant outskirts of the solar system, instead of being a planet, it could be a black hole the size of a tennis ball. That would explain all the exact same data, just like a big planet. One of my most fun examples of hunting for potential primordial black holes is that if they're small enough, we can't really detect them. They'd slip by microlensing. It wouldn't rip apart binaries, but they might collide with the Earth, especially if the universe is flooded with, you know, just small, very, very tiny, like less than a grape-sized black hole, just even smaller, like almost microscopic black hole, if it collides with the earth, it would eventually evaporate because it's small enough. But in the, in the moment of the collision, because there's so much gravity and intense gravity, gravitational density, it could trigger earthquakes. So maybe some of the earthquakes that we experience on earth are because we're getting struck by microscopic black holes. <sighs> 
I, I have to hand it to the theorists, all right? They're being pretty creative here. There's lots of cool ideas floating around for how we might detect primordial black holes. To date, as of this day in 2020, we have absolutely no evidence for any primordial black holes. We've looked at binaries. We looked at dwarf galaxies. We looked at microlensing. Uh, we studied the earthquakes on the Earth. All the possible places where we could look for the effects of primordial black holes, we don't see any. What does that mean? Does, it's not primordial black holes. Black holes formed during the Big Bang aren't entirely ruled out. But we do have very, very strict limits of how many there can be, uh, how massive they can be, what kind of ranges, what kind of theoretical models are allowed. And at this point, at this point, it's just looking a little bit thin. So as cool as it would be for black holes to be triggering some of our earthquakes, it just doesn't look like that's the case. And But hey, that's science. You know, we got some cool ideas. It was worth a shot. We worked really hard to find it. We ended up not finding anything. Okay, say la vie. You know, that's just the way it works. And we can move on to other, other things to wonder about. Sorry, primordial black holes. We really gave you a chance. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe, and notification, all that. You know what to do. You've been on YouTube long enough. And go to patreon.com slash pmsutter and keep these shows on the air, and I will see you next week.